In this video, I am going to give you five good reasons why you may want to consider claiming your Social Security benefits at the earliest age possible of 62. We will discuss the break-even point, and I will give you five good reasons why you may not want to claim at age 62. Welcome to the Financial Fast Lane. My name is Lane Martinson. Today I'm going to give you five good reasons why you may want to claim your Social Security benefits early, and I will also give you five good reasons why you may not want to do that. And so before I do, um, it's important that we kind of cover some basic concepts, uh, make sure we understand how Social Security works, and I'm going to do a comparison using kind of a sample couple. Um, we have John and Linda. Um, John's full retirement benefit, his PIA, is 2442 I'm going to use in this example. His wife, Linda, uh, is going to be receiving the spousal benefit, which is 50% of John's benefit, 1221 And I'm going to assume a 3% COLA in all years, okay? Now, you want to know that everyone has a crossover point. Um, regarding whether you claim early or you claim late or somewhere in between. Um, but in this example, we're looking at claiming early and, and delaying all the way to age 70, just as a comparison, okay? Now, in this example, as you look at this chart, uh, you can see that their crossover point is, is 79 and 8 months, um, 79 and 2 months for her. And so... Um, it's typically going to be around age 79 to 81. That is really the range. I know a lot of times people think that the crossover point is much longer, um, but it's not. Um, age 80 is really kind of um, where most people are going to reach their crossover point between claiming early or claiming late. Now, a, a really important concept to talk about here is life expectancy because how long you live is a very big factor as far as the strategy that you might want to use, right? Now, um, what you don't want to use is the national average. The national average life expectancy in the United States is 70, age 79. It's in the United Kingdom, it's 81. In Canada, it's age 82. But there's a problem with average life expectancy because it takes into account all of the you know, infant deaths from birth, um, opioid overdoses, uh, fatalities, and, and so forth. All the bad things that can happen to you throughout a lifetime um, are included in that national average. But if you have already made it into your 60s and you're in generally good health, then your life expectancy is not the national average. For a female age 65, her average life expectancy is age 86. For a man, it's age 85. This is uh, my dad and I. This photo was taken, um, he was 92 at the time. He actually passed away uh, recently at age 94. He was actually just short of his 94th birthday. And he had a very long and independent life. But the truth is, um, just a generation before, if he had been born a generation before, he would not have lived anywhere near that long. 30 years ago, my dad had open heart surgery and it preserved his life and he had a very long independent life. And so we really do live longer nowadays. The fastest growing segment of the US population is people age 85 and older. I mean, think about that. That is the fastest growing segment of our population. Um, it is projected in, in 28 years from now that there will be a million Americans that are age 100 or more. So we definitely have a, an aging population. So you want to be sure to consider uh, life expectancy when making a decision. Okay, so now let's do a comparison here. Okay, so this is this is showing a side-by-side -side comparison starting at age 62 all the way to age 85, okay? 
And so the pink column represents, if, you, if they claim their Social Security benefits at age 62, um, and then the purple column is if they claim their benefits at age 70. At age 70, you'll see that their payments are going to be much larger, right, because they have earned the delayed credits. But at age 62, uh, while their payments are less, they have many more years of payments, right? And so by the time, between age 62 and 69, if we look at how much they have received in total at that point, it's a quarter of a million dollars, right? $249,000 that they had received before they reached age 70. So that is a lot of money to, be cons to take into consideration, right? So now, if, we ha if this couple was to claim at 70, they didn't have that income, but they now have these larger payments and their break even is at age 79, just right about almost age 80. And so from that point on, they're going to have more money. So let's look at this chart. So if, uh, if this couple has a short life, and a short life is defined uh, by age 75. So if you, if you were to die at age 75, and you compare the total cumulative, uh, you're going to have more money if you claim early at 62, right? And so... Claiming at 62 would be the best option in that case. Then the full retirement age is kind of showing the middle of the road. And then um, age 70 would be the worst option if you're planning to, to die at age 75. And now, if you have a normal life expectancy, normal life is considered age 85, then you can see that claiming 62, you're leaving a good amount of money on the table. And then if you have a long life, uh, this is assuming age 95, um, there's a really big difference in the total cumulative benefits. So as we look at this chart side by side, if you were to claim at age 70 and you live to age 85, then you would have a total cumulative um, additional amount of $229,000 compared to if you were to claim earlier, right? And then if you lived uh, to 95, it's a huge difference, right? $703,000 more by delaying the time that you started Social Security. But now I'm going to give you five good reasons why you may want to claim your Social Security benefits early. Number one, you want to preserve your retirement investments and to allow them to grow better over time. So this is a real viable option. So if you're retiring, and it may not be 62, but sometime before 70, right? If you have an investment account and you now need to pull for, you need income, and you start taking withdrawals from your savings or from your retirement accounts, that money now is, is going to be used and it, it cannot be, it's no longer able to grow over time. And so you start to deplete your assets. So starting Social Security can um, allow you to preserve more of those retirement assets. And so it can make, it, it's a whole additional component that will apply to some people and not to others. And so um, there are times when it, it really does make sense to claim early because you want your investments to grow and keep, continue to grow. And so looking at this crossover point chart again, um, if you claim at age 62 and your crossover point is age 80, that means in between all those years from 62 to 80, you will have more money from Social Security. It's only after that you, it starts to drop, right? It's in, the, it's in those la later years. So number two, you have a source of guaranteed lifetime income that you cannot outlive, such as a pension or an annuity. And so, again, um, the reason why you might delay um, is if you have some concern about those later years and wanting to make sure that you have money to cover you in your 80-plus age range. But if you've already mitigated longevity risk with an annuity or, or you have a pension, 
that has lifetime income on top of your Social Security. And then you may, you know, those later years may be fully taken care of and you really don't have as much concern. Um, that can be a reason why you might want to go ahead and claim Social Security benefits um, as well. Okay. Number three is based on your health. You know, if you simply do not expect to live to break even, that would be a, a very compelling reason to, to go ahead and claim early. Number four, you'll be switching from your benefit to a higher spousal benefit when your spouse files. So that's going to apply to some people um, where they have their own benefit, but it's smaller than the spousal benefit. And so one, benef one uh, spouse could claim their benefit for a number of years and then switch to the, to the larger spousal benefit. Number five, for whatever reason, you are not able to work past 62 uh, and you simply need the money. And so some, many times that's the case and you just need to take the money and claim it 62. So those five good reasons. Now I'm going to give you five good reasons why you may not want to claim early. Number one is you're still working and your income exceeds the earnings limit. All right, so Social Security is intended for retirement. And so if you retire what they consider early, prior to your full retirement age, then you are penalized uh, based on your income. So the earnings limit is $19,560 as, as of 2022. So what that means is you can claim Social Security early, you can continue to work, and as long as your income doesn't surpass $19,560, there's no penalty or problem. But if your income does surpass that, then it's a stiff penalty. It's 50% of everything above that threshold is going to be penalized. And so it, it really, very rarely is it going to make sense to claim early if you are still working. Number two, you are not able to adequately save for retirement and you will become heavily dependent on Social Security. So if Social Security is going to be really your main source of income down the road, that's a really compelling reason to not claim early. To try to work another year or two, let Social Security get a little bit larger, maybe work two or three more years where you can save up some additional money it can be a really smart strategy and it'll give you more Social Security down the road. Number three, your benefit is likely to become the survivor's benefit for a younger and healthier spouse. So you may have the, the larger um, Social Security benefit in a, in, a, in a married couple where that person is maybe in poor health and they don't anticipate living to, to break even. Um, and so claiming early may be, make a lot of sense for them but if, the, but if the surviving spouse is, is going to inherit that benefit, then um, that's a consideration. So you, you may want to delay for the benefit that the surviving spouse can have a larger benefit. Number four, you have a Roth conversion plan over the next few years and you are trying to manage the taxes and you do, don't want to increase the provisional income which will cause taxation on your Social Security benefits, and as well as potential IRMA charges on Medicare. And so you have to be careful if you're doing Roth conversions. That may be a reason um, to defer Social Security. And then number five is if you have longevity and you really expect to live a long life, that is a compelling reason also to um, not claim early. Social Security really is very complex and it's easy to make mistakes. You wanna get this right. There's a lot of money at stake, and it really is going to vary a lot depending upon your situation. Every person is unique, and there's a lot of things to, to be considered. Now, um, we have a professional Social Security analysis report that's available through my firm. Um, very comprehensive, personalized report that's gonna show you all the, your specific strategies, and best options. Um, you can ha access that by going to socialsecuritylane.com. 
for more information. It's a nominal fee, but uh, I think you'll find it very well worth it. So I hope you found value in this video. If you did, I hope you'll share it with others. Please give us a thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode of The Financial Fast Lane.